Um, the brother who's leading the worship, I'm, I'm, names are escaping me, I'm sorry. James. James, would you speak for a moment with uh, Jenny? She had a song during our prayer time that I'd, I'd like to end with if possible. Thank you, James. And thank you, John. John was just with us in Maryland. Uh, just profound message. Unforgive, dealing about forgiveness. Spoke deeply to our, our, our men from around the world. Thank you, John. Wow. And, and, and the word I, I have in terms of a prophetic word is very simple. Treasure this worship. What you have, what you've experienced this morning, this morning, this morning, is increasingly unusual and difficult to find. I have the privilege of touching nations around the world, congregations around the world, around our country. Please, treasure what you have here on a Sunday morning. It's not guaranteed for the future, by the way. So treasure every moment you have to gather together publicly, corporately, to lift your voices in worship. So what would it look like? What does it look like? I'm, I'm, I'm very visual. I take to make, make these pictures. Does it look like something like this? Is it, it, to, work, to walk in God's will, is it, hey, Jamie, will you listen to me? Is that your picture of God? Keeping you in his will? Or is it maybe far off, something like this? Daniel! <laughs> or is it maybe something like, I'm driving the cameraman crazy. <laughs> Could it be that walking in the will of God all of the time looks much more like this? How's it going? Yeah, what, what, can we, what can we get into today? I'd like to hear what you've got to say to me. <laughs> I, you know, to be quite honest, I, I'd like to hear what you have to say as well. Well, I'm finding this particular area difficult, and I need your guidance and wisdom yeah. in it. And this is how I see What have you done so far with it? Um, I've tried this I think they've approach, got the point. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 16. And please turn with me. Let me be old school for a moment. If you've got a paper Bible, remember what they look like? If you have an electronic version, that's great. I do too. But please turn with me in honor of God's word, bearing that picture in mind. Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 16. But I say... Walk in the spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, fractions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I forewarned you, that those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against these things there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. That that last verse captures the heart of what I felt the Lord laid on, laid, gave me to share with you this morning. This invitation to come and walk and walk with God. And I believe that although this was certainly a principle that's invalid for the 
2,000 years of church history, if we ever needed to know what it meant to, mean to live by faith, to walk in the Spirit, these are tough days. I believe in this season, we use that term in our circles somewhat frequently, and I'm not sure how well it communicates. Um, this, there do seem to be seasons of God within the kingdom of God. We, we have them in, the, in, in nature. It's in autumn. You, you call it, we call it the fall. You can translate for me, Jamie. That's because that's the leaves fall. Uh, we'll go into winter. Winter will come into spring. It, there seem to be these seasons even in the kingdom of God, in the, in the things of the Spirit, where God does things in a very particular way. And, and I, I, my, my spirit is, is peaked, if you will. I mean, just think of what's going on in the world around us right now. War, rumors of war, famine, pestilence. And, and it's hard times. There are people, real people, suffering around us right now. And it's not just your neighbors. It's all over the world. I mean, in my lifetime, I think back, the, the first major world event that I can, can and not even remember, but, but think of would be World War II. World War II shook the whole world. There wasn't a tar- part of the globe that wasn't touched. And then you had this huge gap, if you will, 50 years, 60 years. What's the next major, I mean, truly worldwide event? I think it's probably 9-11. Although it happened in New York, it, it, it had impact literally around the world. And then uh, another significant gap, and that's COVID-19. It's, COVID-19 has changed the world. And, and now just, just the, the gaps seem to be shortening, don't they? This, this war in Ukraine. Um, I mean, I get to travel the world, and there are... Banana plantations right now in, in Ecuador, along the coast of Ecuador. Huge plantations, thousands of acres. that are lying fallow because their major customer was Russia. And so they're going bankrupt. Uh, thousands of men have lost their jobs. In South Africa, people are choosing now what days they will eat and what they'll eat what days. These, these, these ramifications of the things that are going around us. And, and as I meditated on those things several months ago, I, I felt like I just heard that churning in my spirit. These are the beginnings of, the day of, of, of sorrow. The, 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 uh, the, the, the newer translations say the beginning of birth pangs. Now, I've never been pregnant, much to your surprise. Um, but I've been the, have the approach of, of, of having two, two sons. And birth pangs are, t- are tough. Tough, tough stuff. But what gave my wife hope was the knowledge that after the birth pangs came a baby. And I believe the great sign, in fact, Jesus' words are, the great sign is this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in every nation, and then the end shall come. So while I, I, I'm, pr- I'm pretty, pretty much an optimistic in fact, I'm optimistic to a, to a fault at times. I, I find myself looking around thinking, I don't expect things to get better soon. In fact, they'll probably get worse. And it's not just here in the UK. I, I know you have turmoil in, in politics and in, in, in finance. And let me assure you, misery loves company. <laughs> There's plenty of it around the world. But this is our day of opportunity. This is our day for the, for the gospel. And, and I believe that... that if we will we'll increase our, our sensitivity, our, 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 our attention, our, that little illustration, if you will, if we learn to walk with God at a higher level of sensitivity, we'll experience some of the greatest moments of our lives. So I wonder if anyone knows what this is. Any ideas? You're dating yourselves. I love a map. You know, the neat thing about a map is you can lay it out and you can see the beginning and the end all at one time. I guess it's kind of the way my, my brain, I like, I like the, the big picture approach of things. I'm going to give that to you, Daniel. Um, and when these things came around, I promise you I was a bit resistant but which is really better? The map, 
where I can lay it all out and kind of plan my way forward and, and uh, yeah, pretty much have control of things. Which is really more accurate? Which, which gets me to the place more consistently? This thing that is constantly, constantly changing. I have, to, I have to give it constant attention. I've got to pay it. I'm going down the highway recently, traveling uh, to another state, and that lady, <laughs> mine has an Australian accent. I tried UK, and I just couldn't keep up with her. <laughs> I've got to train my ears. She says, get off of this exit. I said, what in the world is she doing? And it turned out there was a major accident on the highway that blocked the highway. I had no way of knowing that. And I, I actually, I had my wife open her phone and check it for sure. And she saved me hours because I was paying attention. Moment by moment. This, this verse in, in verse 16, uh, the, the, real, the, real, the real verse that really kind of initiates this, this passage. But I say, walk by the Spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Several words just jump out to me. This, this idea of, of walking. It's, it's this idea of, of having a companion. It's, 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 it's being occupied with and, and, and paying attention to the person around us. And then do not gratify the, 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 the longings, the desires, those things which, which are of the, the flesh. And the flesh speaks of that sensual nature, that human nature. The, the earthly nature that, well, we still live in. And here's Paul's call. Walk in the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. See, the real problem, notice Paul puts walk first and then tells us not what not to do. He it starts with the positive. The real problem isn't the world around us. The real problem is me. <laughs> it's, it's getting a hold of my head and getting my attention on the Lord. Um, the, the reality is, you can only really do one thing at a time. Your, your, your brain is biologically wired so that you can only do one thing at a time, only think about one thing at a time. We probably can do more than one thing. But the, now I, I know the moms among us amaze us with what seems to be the ability to think about things three or four at a time. Uh, but multitasking is really just that. When you multitask, you're literally switching from one thought to another, one subject to another. And, uh, and the, the challenges in the, in the world we live today, that there's just so many things coming at us, consistently over, over, overwhelming, overtaking us, that paying attention to God is really hard work. Being aware of his presence, being aware of what he wants to say to us. And, and, and that tendency, I like maps because there's that independent part of me that says, I want to take charge. I want to be in control. There's, there's another part that, that is gripped by fear if I'm not in control or insecurity or, 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 or bitterness and, and the things we feed ourselves with. Uh, and do you remember the days, I'll date myself, when there were just one or two TV channels? <laughs> and it was the BBC or that was it? Now uh, there's the 24-hour news cycle. And by the way, if there's more than one person on the screen talking to you, and they're talking to each other. That's not news. That's commentary. Now, again, I'm not saying that's, that's evil necessarily, but don't mistake commentary with news. And so we fill our, we, 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 we fill our heads, we surround ourselves with, with everyone else's opinion of, of what's going on, and it, it, it becomes overwhelming. It, it, it presupposes us, predeposes us to distraction. And I love the words of, of Paul and Timothy chapter, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. But godliness is actually a means of great gain when accompanied, accompanied by contentment. For we brought nothing into the world. We cannot take anything out of it either. If we have food and raiment, with these we should be content. Yet what is it that we're striving after, we're, we're longing, we're searching for, we're, we're grasping for? What, what is it that, that drives us? pushes us forward. Paul says, I, I do not speak from want, for I've learned, this is Paul, to be content in whatever circumstances I am. For I know how to get along with humble means. I also know how to live in prosperity. 
And in every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, how many times have we taken that last verse? This is Philippians chapter 4. That last verse, verse 13, out of context. I can do all things. Sounds like an American, doesn't it? (laughs) Rah, rah, rah. Wait a minute. Put it back where it belongs. Paul said, guys, I've been really poor at times. And there have been times where I was really blessed. And, and, and it's true. If you look at Paul's life, I mean, he, he most likely was a member of the Sanhedrin, one of the, the ruling class of Israel. He was also beaten and shipwrecked, left for dead once, stoned and left for dead. And I don't mean stoned, you know. I mean stoned. <laughs> he, he'd been on, on all, 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 all sides of it and, and in the process discovered this, this joy of, of walking with God. Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. And his first admonition is, give us this day our... Now, I, I don't call it the Lord's Prayer. I call it the, the Disciples' Prayer because I believe the Lord gave it to the disciples as a model, as, a, as an example. And it's all about the kingdom, by the way. He starts right out with saying, Our Father who is in heaven, thy kingdom come. So if you want to understand the kingdom, study the prayer. Notice he starts by saying, our Father. Speaks of the relationship he invites us into. There there are at least 6,000 religions around the world. And as far as I know, no no other religion uh, addresses their their, their God as Father. Pretty cool when you think about it. The God of the universe. (laughs) The God who created all that. (laughs) invites us to, to come to him, address him as Father. And, and, and our automatic response is, holy is your name. Again, please treasure your worship. Boy, just sitting here, standing here this morning, just the minute you start worshiping, I, I, it's all I can do to control myself. I know I'm an American. I got emotional. Holy is the Lord. That's our, that should be our automatic response. But your kingdom come. Do you think God's getting his will done in heaven? Does he wake up in the morning and think, boy, how am I ever going to get all my work done today? Of course, he doesn't wake up in the first place. (laughs) And and he says, pray this way. Your kingdom come on earth in me as it is in heaven. Give us as they are daily bread. My wife and I celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary in August. Um, I'll only get to say that a couple more times, I guess. I, mean, I don't want to wear it out. I'm going, to wear, I'm, going to, I'm going to rejoice as long as I can. And the people ask from time to time, well, how do you do that? And I've got a very similar form, simple formula. Your life is the sum total of many small decisions. Your life is the sum total of many small decisions. We sweat over the big ones. Will I go to university? Will I buy a house? Who will I marry? Where will I get a job? Where will I go to church? Are these important decisions? Of course they are. And yet, I think if you join me in thinking back over your life, even if you're younger than I, you'll have to agree that most of those decisions are made day by day. We, 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 I've often said, God tricks me into my best decisions. <laughs> and tricked isn't quite the right word, but he, 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 I stumble into. <laughs> and and uh, my, my, my relationship with Linda is, is much that. She's actually on a mission herself this morning with uh, her extended family. Kind of a neat story. She, she met her real mom after we were married. Uh, her dad was a charlatan in the highest form of the word. And uh, just very dysfunctional. She has at least 17 siblings that we know about. And she's with the children of one of those siblings who went on to be with the Lord earlier this year. Um, I wish she could be here. I'm sorry I get talking about her. <laughs> I'm not sorry. And, uh, and the way we met and the relationship we, we stumbled, I stumbled into it was all this one decision at a time. One decision at a time. If you want to get the full story, pull me aside someday. 
How many, how many times do we sweat over, struggle over, trying to figure out how, how, to, how to get to that, that, that big decision, how to, to make that, that thing work in our lives when it's really just as simple as saying, give us this day our daily bread. Jesus in Matthew 6, verse 31 says, do not worry then. Do not worry then, saying, what will we eat? and What will we drink? Now most of us, I'm saying most of us, there are some among us, most of us are not asking that question quite yet. There's enough in the cupboard that when we ask what will we eat, it's because it's, we're making choices about what we will eat. There are those among us who are wondering what they will eat, and certainly beyond our borders. But Jesus said, don't worry saying what will we eat and what will we drink. What will we wear for clothing? The Gentiles eagerly seek after these things, for your heavenly Father knows you need all these things, but seek First, his kingdom, his righteousness, and these things will be added unto you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And you could say amen. <laughs> What's he saying? Take one day at a time. If you take care of today's problems today, if you focus on today's problems today, and don't carry them over into tomorrow. I was in an airport recently, and I watched, a, I watched a, uh, the, the guy who was doing the cleaning, uh, janitor, I guess you'd say, uh, pushing. We call them dust broom, dust mop, kind of this wide deal that's got like a cloth on it, and he's pushing it back and forth. It's a tile floor, back and forth. And, and I, thought, I think he thought no one was looking. As he finished kind of going back and forth across the hall, he worked back, he came around to where there was a stairway. He pushed it behind the stairway and shook it out. I wonder how long you can get away with that. <laughs> and I wonder how often I do that. How often do I, do we, each one of us, put off till tomorrow? I, 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 take care of today's problems. It's interesting that as the, as the people of Israel moved through the wilderness, the, 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 the word was very clear. I'm going to provide miraculous manna. Most of us have not yet experienced miraculous manna because we haven't needed to. And there well may come the day when we do. In fact, people ask me, we had this discussion just the other day, do you see more miracles overseas than you do here? And I would have to say, no, probably not. Um, you know, I'd say the percentage, if you will, I'm not keeping track, but the number of people I pray for here or there probably is pretty similar. Um, I think often God provides miraculously when we have no other choice, which is why if you do see more miracles overseas, that's probably why you do so. Uh, and, and I guess I say that because I think that sometimes guest speakers tell all the stories about when it works. We don't often talk, tell you about the times we pray for people and it doesn't work. Uh, and my percentages are, uh, well, we won't go into that. <laughs> you see... I think the Lord's trying to get our attention. Pay attention. Listen, walk with me. Listen to me. I want to guide you day by moment by moment. I'm going to be talking to you. And when you need, I'll be there. That daily manna. In fact, it was very specific, wasn't it? On the, on the, on the, on the, the day before the Sabbath gathered for two days, you'll have enough then to go through. And there was, of course, this one guy. There's always one in every crowd. Says, you know what? I'd like to sleep in tomorrow morning. So let's double. I'll gather double manna today. And, and then, then I can sleep in tomorrow morning. We'll have enough for the, the day coming, right? And, and when he went to the cupboard to pull out that manna from yesterday, what was it? <laughs> it's kind of the way it is with the word of the Lord, isn't it? The bread of life. I need fresh bread every day. The, the bird... The raven that fed Elijah. Ravens are birds of prey. Here's this bird feeding Elijah there in the mountain. What? Twice a day, day by day, with bread and meat. That, that widow lady that, that cared for him after the brook dried up. Again, I love telling the story. I won't take your time this morning. But it was day by day that she went back to the cupboard. Can you imagine? Day by day, there was a little bit of oil and a little bit of flour, and she made that cake and fed her son 
fed herself, fed the, fed the prophet until the, until the rains came again. Lord, give us grace, Lord, to, to be so hungry that I, I have to have a fresh word, a fresh sense of your presence day by day, moment by moment, walking, walking with you. It's, it's really about abiding. Abiding is about walking in the spirit. This picture of the line, let's get that up there. That's one of my pictures, by the way. You think he's worried about anything? I don't think he's worried about a thing. And uh, I guess I feel like that's kind of what the Lord wants for you and for me. That we would be in such a place of abiding, of, of, of knowing his presence, of walking with him, that, that place of assurance that we would know that, well, like the lion, there's nothing to worry about because, because we're walking with God. One of my, I say favorite books, it's kind of a tough read, but one of my favorite books would be The Practice of the Presence of God by Brother Lawrence. It's certainly worth getting a hold of. Uh, um, Brother Lawrence uh, was a monk, actually started out as a farmer, peasant farmer, Middle Ages, and because of his call, his heart to be, be with God, to spend time with God, he decided to volunteer to become a monk, to join a monastery, with the assumption that if you go to a monastery, you get to spend all your time in prayer. It's like a good idea. He didn't, didn't pay enough attention. <laughs> because when he got to the monastery, he discovered you got to have a, a, everyone has a job in the monastery. Some of you are smiling, you know what comes next, don't you? So his, his first assignment was washing pots. Now, roll back the picture in your mind. This is the Middle Ages. What did they cook with? It wasn't gas. <laughs> it was fire. It's dirty. It's ugly. It's everything you can imagine. And, and he's, he's de discouraged. He's depressed. What, what? This isn't what I signed up for. Anyone feel like that on a typical Tuesday morning? I mean, really? When you're trying to get the kids off to school, trying to get Zoom to work, to connect with your boss or whatever it is. I just want to spend time with God. And, and this little book's the story is, is actually a collection of the letters he wrote uh, to a friend talking about his journey of coming to the place where recognizing that even when he was washing pots, he could enjoy the presence of God, the peace of God, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. The awareness of his, 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 his revelation, his, his inspiration, et cetera, et cetera. And, and that's, our, that's, our, that's our, our invitation, if you will. And to me, it's a bit of a conundrum. Um, I wish I could say, maybe I don't even wish. I'll have to say, I've heard from the Lord clearly enough I can quote him probably three times in my life. Um, when the Lord called me to move to Zimbabwe. Oh, boy, I, I, it was hard for me not to join the guys in it. So when I first learned that little phrase, Jesu Makanaka, I learned it as Moari Wakanaka. But I said it Moari Wakanaka. And that means money is good. <laughs> I was trying to say God is good. <laughs> God is good! And I was saying money is good! <laughs> Yeah, and just this, this clear word came to me. One, one day I was in prayer, actually, it, it, on a Sunday morning. Uh, we had a guest preacher from the, from the UK, actually, a man who became a dear friend. And since I didn't have, preach that morning, I was just spending time waiting on the Lord. And the word came. I can quote today exactly what I heard the Lord say. That's happened two or three times in my, in my whole life. The majority, nearly all of my life, it's this, this, these little impressions do you know what I'm talking about? Is there a better word for it somehow? This, this little tug of the heart, this, this pay attention. Go try this direction. Listen to me. I was talking with, with uh, one of the brothers just yesterday. He was talking about how a couple of months ago he was uh, traveling here through the, through, the, through the public transport in, in London. And when he got to the platform, he had that, that, that little impression. Go down to the other end of the platform. Everyone else is standing here. You go down to this end of the platform where no one else is standing. 
he gets on the train. As he sits down, there's a friend from years ago. And they sit down and they chat together. Finds out that the friend is, 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 is ill and he gets to pray with him on the train. And by the way, when you get those opportunities to pray for people, don't take responsibility for healing. That's God's job. And I don't understand why everyone isn't healed all the time. And they will be. At one. When we come into the kingdom, we're in the kingdom, but the kingdom is yet coming. Great theological discussion. And when we come into the kingdom, everyone will get healed. In the meantime, keep praying for everyone God gives you the opportunity. And make sure it's the Lord leading you in the process. You don't have to force it. But the point was, why, why walk to the other end of the platform? That, that, little, that little voice, that, it's not even a voice, is it? That, that, in, that impression. Isn't it that the Lord wants to do that with us, through us, in us, every day and all day long? So I'm talking about cultivating an awareness. Of Jesus within. It's not even a voice out there somewhere. But Christ who lives within us. Galatians 5 is set up by Galatians 4. Where Paul says it's Christ in you. Christ in you. I long, Paul says, I long that you would be aware that, that it's Christ in you. Who empowers you and strengthens you. Transforms you. Jesus alive inside of every single one of us. And just longing to leak through. And when he speaks, when he touches people, when he ministers, his, his voice is going to sound an awful lot like yours. When he touches someone, his hand's going to feel well, exactly like yours. When, when there's a, a word of comfort, a word of encouragement, it's going, to be, it's going to be your words, your vocabulary that he's going to use because it's Jesus in you, flowing through you, that longs to touch a world around us. It's always been in bad shape, but getting worse every day right now. So that's my, that's my challenge, my invitation. I, just, I, I invite you to, to refocus, if you will. Don't let the things around you distract you. Be careful what you feed yourself. There's so much stuff out there, particularly in our Christian circles. It seems like we go a little crazy with, with everything that's wild and crazy. I don't know how it was here in the UK, but uh, when the Y2K thing came around, all the computers were going to crash and the world was going to burn. And in and, and our side of the pond, they were, people were stocking up on water and stocking up on food. Who was it that was buying all those books? And part of it is we do believe in the end of the world. But the other part of it is there's something about us that is easily captured by things that really aren't important. And I believe that the Lord is longing to capture our heart. Capture that, that hand and walk with us by his spirit, by his power. Would, would our brother came, come back to the keyboard, please? I've forgotten your name already. James, right? Thank you, James. And, and could you, as we're, as we're closing this morning, just, just reflect on what that could mean to you. What would it be like for you what would your life look like if you were walking in the will of God every day all the time? Africa. Asia. Well, he could call you to, the, to another nation. It, it, is, it is possible. It's more likely he's going to call you to your neighbor. Judy talked to, to us about that a couple weeks ago, didn't she? Because if you can't reach your neighbor, you're probably not going to do much in Africa either. It's probably that, that person on the platform as you're waiting for the, for the train. It's, it's that, that day by day, moment by moment opportunity. And, and I, I, I invite you. We're in for a ride. There's going to be some ups and downs. There's going to be some tough times ahead. But for those of us who are sharpening our ears, who are tuning our hearts, who are, who are in tune with the Holy Spirit, we're in, for, we're, in for, we're in for a ride. This is going to be a lot of fun. Because we're going to watch God do things through us that were written about in the book of Acts. Miracles. Because desperate times allow God to be just who he loves to be through each and every one of us. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Should we stand as we sing? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the 